Please be seated. Good afternoon, uh, or really good morning. Uh, Dean Thomas, Registrar Pierce, distinguished guests, members of the faculty, members of the graduating class, and ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2015 commencement exercises for the Executive Masters in Leadership, DC Public Schools. I'm George Liebensfeld, Director of Academic Affairs for the Office of Executive Education at the McDonough School of Business. Today we assemble to honor candidates for the degree of Executive Masters in Leadership. We will begin our ceremony with an invocation delivered by Reverend Raymond Kemp. Following the invocation, Professor Douglas McCabe will read the university charter and academic director Bob Beast will address the candidates. Please stand for the singing of God Bless America and Freedom at Last, which will be led by members of the Bernard Elementary School Choir. Please remain standing for the invocation.
in the spirit of uh, free at last. A moment of quiet on this day, the second year anniversary of the death, death of Madiba Nelson Mandela. A moment of quiet, a moment of realizing that we're in solidarity with all God's children. We call into this wondrous space the spirit of the living God, and with hearts filled with gratitude, pray a blessing on these graduates, their families, their schools, and their departments, all of whom have supported them during this wondrous year. With an eye to the whiz, we know you have endowed them and their teachers, this faculty, the brains, the courage, hearts. We have built a community, enriching one another and the McDonough School of Business and the wondrous DC Public Schools during this year of discovery and coming into a deeper meaning, a deeper awareness of the great calling that we have. These folks have come into that knowledge of self, not with three clicks of heels, but with the solid work of learning, and a click of a song in their hearts. And as we rejoice with them, we pray that their journey of coming into a mastery of knowing and a confidence in leading may continue to spread through their schools in this city. Give them the joy of completing this phase of pilgrimage and a deep sense of bringing others to grow. Can I get an amen? amen. Please be seated. From caring comes courage. Those words from the Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu capture the essence of who you are and how you live your life of leadership. Your caring and courage have been on display all year long. I have witnessed the courage of one who brought life into this world, as well as the courage of those who had to bear witness to the lives of loved ones who passed from this world. I have witnessed the courage of those who are still trying to find their way in a reorg central office, as well as those who display courage day in and day out to close the achievement gap too many students experience, and the courage to keep fighting the fight for all students from Southeast DC to Northeast DC to Northwest DC, to realize their potentials and achieve the academic success they rightly deserve, whether it be in an elementary school, an educational campus, a middle school, or a high school. I have also witnessed your courage in successfully accomplishing the most intense and intensive year-long executive master's in leadership program. And what a year it's been. As I reflect back on this year, the words of Nelson Mandela, which are engraved on the paperweight that I gave you, come to mind. They probably capture the feeling you're feeling right now. It always seems impossible until it's done. Well, it's done. Um, but as we convene in this great hall, I'm reminded of the wisdom of Althea Gibson. And Althea Gibson said, no matter what accomplishments you make, somebody helps you. You had the help and support of spouses, partners, family, friends, and work colleagues who got you through this program. How about you stand up, turn around, give them a standing O for their support and love of you. From caring comes courage. You have all answered the call to leadership in DCPS and to continue to do right by and for the students and for this city, you will need courage and to keep it real, even more courage going forward. In particular, you will need the courage to keep dreaming, the courage to keep moving, and the courage to keep loving. The courage to keep dreaming. John Lennon once said, a dream you dream alone is only a dream. A dream you dream together is reality. And I have seen you dream together all year long School to school, school to central office, central office to school. While many examples come to mind, let me just highlight one. 
Imagine we have a principal at Brown Education Campus in Northeast DC, whose student population is primarily African American. Now imagine we have a principal at H.D. Cook Elementary School in Northwest DC, whose student population is primarily, is majority Latino. Those two principals dream a dream together to bring these two schools together in a Saturday mentoring program. Mentors provided by another dreamer, the principal of Eastern High School. Um, these mentors provide academic mentoring and skills-based learning at Brown and H.D. Cook one weekend, and they all convene together a second weekend at Eastern High School. Now imagine you have an innovation guy in central office, and regardless of his reorg title, he's still the innovation guy to me and always will be. <laughs> Coordinating and funding these efforts is part of the Empowering Males of Color initiative in DCPS. And oh yeah, I hope the food guy in this cohort, hello Rob, um, is um, helping out because young people get hungry and they need to eat. And there's probably others in this cohort that are involved in this, I'm just unaware, but that's an example of people who dream to dream together and is making an impact. The courage to keep moving, you are all idealists. Even those momentary cynical moments by a couple of you, hello. You're all idealists. You live and work at the crossroads of idealism and action. And as you work the problems at this crossroads, it can be frustrating, even deeply frustrating, as the movement and action seems so slow to catch up with the idealism and imagination you can envision and know is the right thing to do. I, I hear about, I've heard about your frustration about the search to find the big thing uh, that will change everything in a powerful and positive way for these young people, these scholars in DCPS. I can understand that frustration. I know that frustration. But don't give in to that frustration. Take to heart the wisdom of one who has been fighting for children since her days at the Model Head Start program in Mississippi in the 1960s to her current work at the Children's Defense Fund, Marion Wright Edelman, who said this, we must not in trying to think about how we can make a big difference, ignore the small daily differences we can make, which over time add up to big differences that we often cannot foresee. Don't get paralyzed by failing to do the big, do the small. Things may seem little, but they are big to those they impact. Don't let perfect get in the way of good. Keep moving, resilience is a virtue. The courage to keep loving. Cornell West reminds us of a powerful truth. You can't lead the people if you don't love the people. You can't save the people, people if you don't serve the people. But to love means you will become vulnerable. And when you're vulnerable, you can become more easily frustrated, disappointed, hurt, even betrayed. But without love, you will not be able to communicate the passion and energy that inspires and motivates the students to achieve the greatness of who they are and who they can become. As Cornell West further reminds us, never forget that justice is what love looks like in public. Never lose sight of the human face of the student scholar in your schools, their possibilities, their potentials, their futures. Whether it be a Jamal or a Tamaya, or a Miguel or a Sophia, or a Kelly or a Brian. Remember the powerful words of one of your classmates two weeks ago. It's all about the children. And that same love has to be on display in the central office. Those of you who are leaders in, cent in central office, you must use your power of love to overcome a, overcome a sometimes indifferent and uncaring, if not occasionally hostile, institution in order to achieve the true greatness of what DCS can and should become. From caring comes courage. Scott, James, Kennard, Don, Valen, Delia, Brandon, Jess, Joanne, Brunel, Doug, Rob, Chrisanne, Katie, Murray, Naima, Rachel, Fonda, Carla, and Sandy. Keep dreaming. Keep moving. Keep loving. Remember, your greatness lies ahead of you and also within you. May the force be with you. This year, we have celebrated the 200th anniversary of the signing of our federal charter. So I am very pleased to read the act of Congress dated March 1st, 1815. An act concerning the College of Georgetown in the District of Columbia. 
being enacted by the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that it shall and may be lawful for such persons as now are, or from time to time may be, the President and Directors of the College of Georgetown within the District of Columbia to admit any of the students belonging to said college or other persons meriting academical honors to any degree in the faculties, arts, sciences, and liberal professions to which persons are usually admitted in other colleges or universities of the United States, and to issue in an appropriate form the diplomas or certificates which may be requisite to testify to the admission of such degree. Sign Landon Chavez, Speaker of the House of Representatives, John Gayard, President Pro Temp of the Senate, approved March 1st, 1815, James Madison. As you know and appreciate, part of the strength of any degree program is the academic content. It is now my pleasure to introduce the program's um, academic director, uh, who's responsible for curriculum and other content, Professor Bob Bees. Uh, Bob Bees has, Dr. Bees has already. Uh, uh, you want to do it again? All right, we're getting off script here, ladies and gentlemen. I believe it's James Albright. Thank you. James Albright, please. Good morning. I thought we'd right, moved right past me. <clears throat> it is my duty and pleasure to provide the student address to my colleagues as well as to you. Assembled parents, spouses, children, partners, Friends, educators, professionals, university administrators, faculty, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for all that you did to get us here. We owe you more than we can say. To the District of Columbia Public Schools and Georgetown University, you showed your commitment. You led by example. You walked the walk, the talk. You made your investment in us, your human capital. I can't thank you enough for making this moment possible for us. And at this moment, it's my delightful responsibility to integrate the experiences of 21 educators learning from 10 professors in 14 courses over 11 long months, and to do it in five minutes, but it won't be five. <clears throat> As an aside to each of my colleagues, I promise to say your name for the eventual YouTube video somewhere in my speech. <laughs> I stand before you not as a unique individual, but as a representative of cohort three, the cohort of Katie, Rachel, and Doug, the cohort of love. This doesn't make me a valedictorian, a salutatorian, or even the person who turned the lights on and off during every movie clip, Brandon. <laughs> it just makes me honored to stand and tell you our story. Like all good movies, our story builds to a great moral victory, then leaves us pointed towards the sequel. The, the story started for me, not in January, but decades ago. In 1981, I sat up there, about 10 seats from the side, being inducted into Georgetown University School of Foreign Service. Today, I get the chance to add to my identity as an old Hoya, the Hoyaness of which I share with Fonda, School of Foreign Service 1985, and now I'm a new Hoya, EML 2015. My personal academic story has come full circle. I'd like you to think of a hill rising up from a plain with the 21 of us camped out around its base, including Joanne, Jess, and Scotty. Dr. Beese, our fearless leader, convinces each of us to climb up that hill. That included Andre Kennard and Don. And he says that at the top of that hill, we would have an answer. We didn't really know what the question was, how to ask it, or even how to understand the response. But go, he said, and go we went, along with Chris Ann, Rob, and Valen. Now, two weekends ago at our final residency, we shared our statements of belief with each other after 11 months together. These were powerful personal statements that reveal the motivating factors in our lives. 
We told each other what we live by and who we are. We talked about our families, about the children who desperately need leaders, about our faith and about our dreams. By sharing these beliefs, we collectively embraced them and made them our own. EML made this happen by bringing us together. It took those 11 months to get to the top of that hill to bring us together so we could share those beliefs. We were a scattered, suspicious group. Uh, mixed co uh, Georgetown DCPS created a mixed cohort, as it were, half central office, half principals. That is a very difficult stew. We slowly worked our way up. We took paths we could see and some we couldn't. We stopped when we needed. We detoured around obstacles, took blind leaps when we had to. We found that it didn't matter whose hand was helping us, we kept at it. We laughed a lot, we cried a bit. Murray had a baby. <laughs> and that baby was from the very beginning of the program to the end of the program, so that's truly an EML baby. I think they should get an honorary degree. <laughs> Every other weekend, we kept struggling together. And as Dr. Beast promised, we finally found ourselves here at the top of the hill, this hilltop, this early December day. Cohort three, as we stand and sit here today, great challenges remain. We may never have this particular moment again. That perfect confluence of relief, love, togetherness, challenges met, weariness, earnestness, and hope. Hope in our ability to make real change. But let us not be too quick, however, to congratulate ourselves that we did make it to this hilltop. We think we've done the hard work already, but now we know we get to bask in the glory of our degree in unfettered Saturdays. Sadly, that is just an illusion. Instead, know that the hill concealed from us the real purpose of this trek, a terrifyingly steep, cliff-bound, mist-wrapped mountain that is our ultimate end. We knew it was there, hidden, but we focused on putting foot in front of foot. Now that we are here, and by we, I mean cohorts one, two, and three, we get to see that that mountain will require us to work together. And that includes Sandy, Burnell, and Carla. But maybe this time we won't have to descend into the valley, but can instead find, instead find a new way across the gap to reach that peak. So what is it that calls us to action? And I'll go a little bit off script here. This last week, there was an incident in DC public schools in a school where a student um, was encountered to have brought a handgun to the school, which is, as any administrator knows, as any um, teacher knows, is a hor horrifying, terrible thing to happen in a school. Three weeks ago at our residency, um, one of our cohort one members um, talked to us about the reality of his work in DCPS in a school and said that in his nine years of being a principal, he had buried 44 children. So in my school, in my neighborhood where this other incident happened, I received emails, and I'm a middle school principal, I received emails from parents saying, this makes them question public education. And those are parents who are looking out for their kids, but have options and choices. Their question was, should my child stay in public schools? Or should I instead go charter or perhaps go to an independent school? They had choices. But I'm pretty sure that most of the kids in Principal Branch's school didn't have choices and were there. These are the same, these schools are in the same school district, just a handful of miles apart, and oftentimes share students. It is a single school district. It is a district that has gross inequities. It's an inequity, a system of inequity that allows students in some schools, in my school sometimes, to feel different, almost distinct from the rest of the city. Should we not wonder whether we are really working together, not at cross purposes, central office and schools, to affect the needs of those with disabilities, those who are poorly educated, those who are alienated, those who are homeless, those who are disenfranchised, those who just stay home day after day rather than go to school? Or do we need to find a way to work as a new district, as a single school district, made up of incredibly hardworking educators on what is the greatest challenge we have today? Using education to overcome the seemingly endless divisions of race, culture, income, experience, opportunity, so that in the end, our children can be the people that we believe that they can be. 
So there remains real work ahead. When some of the alumni from the first cohort sat us down, two, first two courts sat down with us two weeks ago, their fire and passion, disappointment and faith were called to us to let us know that now the battle really begins. We knew this, of course. We knew that this journey wasn't about ourselves, but really about those whom we serve. And thankfully today, we are in a better place, ready to do what needs to be done, ready to let the district's commitment to our growth be matched by our commitment to the needs of the least among us. So congratulations, my fellow very lovely cohort mates on this wonderful day. All right, all right. So there's actually a secret mission I have here as well. At some point, a few weeks ago, our cohort, our cohort took a vote on our outstanding professor of the program. So I will now reveal that. I have not seen this yet. None of us have seen it yet. This was a vote taken by our, um, our group. Now I have seen it, so I'm stalling for a moment. <clears throat> um, and in each case, the prof many of the professors that you see up here, we had them for one, two, or in some cases, three times. I think we had Bob B's for 12 courses. Um, <laughs> and it was wonderful. Um, but so the experience of the, the, um, the educators here voting for this is, is based on their reflection over a period of, of weeks and months with that individual. So down here especially, to receive his outstanding professor for our program, is Brendan O'Day. <laughs> You. Oh my gosh. Hmm? Um, this is uh, quite an honor, um, uh, speechless. I'm, I'm touched uh, deeply, as you know. Um, I'm sad that this is the third cohort. Um, I, I don't know what to say. This is just tremendous. I don't feel I did, um, I've earned it as well as I wish I had. Um, but I have loved teaching you. I've loved teaching cohorts one and two. I see many of them here. I'm just so happy that they're together with you. Um, and I just can't wait to see what you guys do with this district. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We will now have a musical selection from our choir.
Good morning. I am Lonnie Smith, Senior Assistant Dean of Executive Degree Programs at the McDonough School of Business. It is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, David A. Thomas. David A. Thomas is Dean and William Baker, excuse me, Berkeley Chair of Georgetown University's McDonough School of Business, where he is committed to creating transformational educational experiences that prepare students to become principal and global leaders poised to serve business and society. Partnering with Washington DC community, David Thomas is a member of the Federal City Council and in 2014 was the Washington Business Journal recognized him as a top minority leader. If you'll welcome me in introducing Dean Thomas. Thank you. Distinguished guests, graduates, members of the faculty and staff, family and friends, it is my honor and pleasure as Dean of the McDonough School of Business to welcome you to this third commencement ceremony of the, of the Executive Masters in Leadership Program for the District of Columbia Public Schools. I wanna start by thanking James for his extraordinary words and sentiments that I think capture in so many ways the work of providing education in our public schools, both the joys and the challenges. I also want to thank the Bernard Elementary Choir for bringing your beautiful voices to our ceremony. I think your, your selection of songs so eloquently captures the soul of the work that we are attempting to do here. Our presence today is the manifestation of what is possible when a university's business school and its community partner to address the most important challenges and opportunities facing business and society. There's no doubt that chief among those challenges and opportunities is the education of every child to be a productive and participating member of our global economy. Some say today that education is the new civil rights movement. I would argue that for this country, education is a matter of national security. It is the area in which if we do not get it right and do it better and better, we will not survive into the next century as a leading nation on this planet. Meeting that challenge, seizing the opportunity, requires transformational leadership. At the McDonough School of Business, we are fond of saying that we are transforming ourselves to transform the world, which requires us to every day ask ourselves how we can be better, to remind ourselves that yesterday's excellence is not tomorrow's. This process of transforming ourselves, or this project of transforming ourselves to transform the world is now one that you join us in. My hope is that your experience over the last 12 months has in some way brought you to see yourself and your ability to make a difference in new ways that enable your work as a transformational leader, in new ways that will enable you to meet the challenges of what some call the VUCA world, V-U-C-A, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. In the context of your journey through this program, we've taught you concepts and we've taught you tools but if we've gotten it right, what we've taught you that will most enable you to meet the challenges of the VUCA world is actually not what we've taught you. It's what we prompted you to explore and to discover that is deep inside yourself, that is about who you are and who you want to be as a leader, what your values are, what your principles are, your ambitions and your fears. Understanding those deeply will anchor you in the context 
of this volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. Our anchor resides inside ourselves and we cannot forget it. Our anchor also resides in the quality of community that we put around ourselves and that we help to build. In the experience that I had when I had the opportunity to lecture in your last residency, what I was most struck by was the, that I could feel the energy of the community that you had created between the time that I was with you in your first residency and coming to meet you in your last residency. It's the quality of that community that if we can build it across education, across educational leaders, that I think allows us to be hopeful about the possibility that we can meet the challenges of the VUCA world in education. So, hopefully we've enabled your work as a transformational leader. And I wanna end by thanking you, our soon to be alumni, for being our partners in this journey. Today, we make history, and I believe our collective efforts will make a transformational difference in the world. Thank you for the work that you will do on behalf of this country and the world. Before we begin the presentation of the candidates for degrees, I would like to recognize the contributions made by faculty and staff who are my diligent partners at the McDonough School of Business, as each one of your students have studied and been a part of counsel for many of the full-time and part-time members of our staff. I therefore ask you, as graduates, to join me in expressing appreciation for all of the teachers and administrators. We will now proceed with the presentation of candidates for degrees. The candidates will please come forward to receive their diplomas. Please hold your applause until the end when all candidates have received their diplomas. Will Dean Thomas and Professors McCabe and Bees please move forward. Scott Abbott. James Albright. Kennard Branch. <laughs> Donald Bryant. Valine Caetano. <laughs> Delia Davis Dyke. Brandon Carlisle Eatman. <laughs> Jessica Grady Hurd. <laughs> J. 
Joanne Henry. Burnell Holland III. C. Douglas Hollis, Jr. Robert Michael Jaybird. Chris Ann LaHue. Katie Larkin. Murray Lopez Hughes. Naima Salahuddin. Andre Samuels. <laughs> Rachel Scarrett. Fonda Sutton. Carla Watson. Cassandra Watson. It is my honor to present the aforementioned candidates for the degree of Executive Masters in Leadership. Will the candidates please rise? These candidates have been duly examined by the faculty and approved by the Board of Directors. I therefore ask that you bestow on them the degrees in course. Dean Thomas. By virtue of the authority invested in me by the Congress of the United States and by the Board of Directors of Georgetown University, I officially confer upon the aforementioned candidates the degree of Executive Masters in Leadership. Congratulations. Before I bid the graduates what I hope will not only be just a temporary goodbye from the hilltop, I'd like to take time to recognize the parents, the spouses, the children,
the relatives, and the friends of the graduates who've provided them and the school such valuable support in many ways. You are as much a part of our Georgetown family as your sons, daughters, husbands, and wives. We honor you and thank you. Graduates, please turn and salute your friends, families, and relatives. Thank you all for joining us today, and congratulations to our graduates. We wish you all well in your future endeavors, and remember, as members of Georgetown alumni, you can always come back to the Hilltop. Reverend Kemp will now offer the, the benediction. As uh, somebody who grew up down the street from Barnard Elementary School, I want to ask you folks to stand up, please. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Loving God, these graduates stand between the world and these young folks. Keep them. Keep them true to your name. Keep them aware of their power. Keep them alive to all the good that there is in this world. Let us continue as we have begun on a journey that leads us into the wonders of knowing, of loving, and of coming to understand one another, and living for the good of all creation as a little anticipation of a reception which is about to happen. I'm gonna close this with old Catholic grace. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, not only the gifts that await us in Riggs Library, but these gifts, now graduated from this wondrous program, the Executive Masters in Leadership. Bless them, we pray, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Will the guests please remain standing at their places until the faculty and graduates have recessed. You are all invited to join us for a reception in the Riggs Library. The ushers will direct you to the reception. The 2015 Executive Masters in Leadership Commencement Exercises are now officially closed.